of your medical degree at the law school. Now, what I'm here to do is I've already opened all the external lockers uh, just for the sake of this video to save a little bit of time. Um, but we'll go through it and I'll show you how things work now. Okay, so first thing to notice is that you've got the BPW hitch and chassis. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean a great deal to you at this point, but uh, uh, a very, very good system. Got the front gas locker here. This is the only one I have open. Just to switch that open, see how high it comes up. It does come up a little bit higher. Okay, so uh, in here, this is where you can put your two gas bottles. We normally recommend six kilo bottles and the pigtails or the gas pipes that are there are set up for propane, which is the Allen's bottle. Okay, got quite a bit of space in there to keep things just for storage. Uh, I would suggest not putting too much in there um, simply because of the nose weight if you are towing. Okay, now going around the van, obviously got some runner lights down the bottom, you can see there. They will be on when you're plugged in. Uh, at the top, you've got an external uh, LED light that shines down so when you're doing your water at night, but if you need to re do your water, you can put it in there. Okay. Right, going in here, you've got the RD uh, heating and gas vent, uh, just the exhaust. Uh, very importantly, here we've got the water. Uh, when the water goes in, that's your water pump in there. Uh, so, you can see we've got a handy little cut out so we can hang that there. So, this bit, which is the main pump, doesn't, this bit there, the main pump, doesn't uh, go onto the floor. But there's your water roll. That will just go in there, down to the bottom, and that will give you all the water you need. You also have an internal tank on here. The internal tank holds 40 litres, as does your aqua roll, so giving you a total of 80 litres. Okay, here you've got the uh, an outside shower vent, well, not vent, uh, point. Uh, that is um, just runs off cold water, so that was either suggesting you cleaned off your boots or, uh, or if you have a dog, clean the dog and nothing else because it'll be cold and you're somewhat exposed outside. Okay. The next locker is the battery locker, okay? There's your uh, leisure battery. Uh, luckily, these uh, the Buccaneers do have a solar solar panel, so they are constantly triple charge uh, on the solar panel. Uh, however, if you're plugged in, this is where your electric plugs in, you, you, this continually charges up your battery, okay? You will not possibly notice here, uh, that is the isolator for your uh, motor movers, which we'll get to later on in the video. Okay. Also in here, you do have, okay, just about to show you that, a six amp uh, power outlet there, should you uh, need to use it. Okay. Now, moving along slightly, we've got uh, just an external locker, quite a large locker. I would suggest maybe for that, whatever you want. Yeah. It's entirely up to you what you use it for. Okay. This is uh, one of your motor movers. You've got four, four wheel, all wheel drive on here, and it's the automatic ones. We will show you that. But I will show you that. So down here, you've got the uh, your waste outlets. So that's your you know, what we call the grey waste. That will be uh, from your sinks uh, in the bathroom and the kitchen, and uh, one for the shower as well. That will go with into a couple of pipes go into the waste master or uh, alternatively some people if you're on a fully serviced pitch you can if you wish um, have a longer pipe all going into straight down to the drain okay now very important part next this is your toilet cartridge okay uh, some caravans you do require a, a rinse to go in however this uh, the flush on these toilets goes directly from the water supply so whether that's your internal supply or an external supply, whatever you're using. Okay, now to remove the cartridge, once it's full, you'll know it's full because a light will come on in the bathroom. Uh, all you do is literally lift this there, pull it out, take it out. Okay, 
also this. Uh, to empty, this moves to the side, down, uh, removes this, this uh, cap, I put it somewhere safe, not near a hole where it might fall in, and then lift to an angle, and this button here releases, uh, it's like, it releases any air pressure, so that helps uh, everything uh, flow out nicely. Once this is empty, uh, you will need to put some of the blue solution in. So slide this thing down. This, try not to let it do that all the time. Open that and put your blue solution and a little bit of water in there, a cap full of blue, and probably about half a litre to a litre of water. Uh, the recommendation will be in your book, Thetford Toilet Cassette book. Okay, then close that up. slide that back in and then that's it I'm ready to go back in. An overflow. Uh, try not to let that uh, get anything get in there because you will have to clean it out and buy hand. Okay so put the toilet set back in make sure that lid is shut. It just goes in. Slides in. Right. Okay, now the back of the van, obviously you've got your light clusters, you've got a, a top brake light there. This is where the number plate goes. A couple of little lights under there to illuminate the uh, number plate and then another light cluster. Storage locker. You can get lots of things in there. You can see the waste monster in there at the moment. You can also see your water tank. Okay. Uh, if you keep your waste, obviously the waste monster will be outside. You can keep lots of stuff in there. Okay. Yeah. Here are the uh, vents for the fridge and the freezer, and for the microwave. You can also see up there. You've got your awning light. Uh, doesn't look particularly much in this light, but I can tell you that really does light up an awning very nicely. We also have another storage locker out here. Uh, within this one, you've got uh, a 230 volt socket and a TV aerial point, so you can run that directly into your awning. Uh, there's plenty of room in there. Okay, you can also access that from underneath the seats. The front seat. And at the front, last but by no means least, an external gas point. So if you have a gas barbecue, uh, you can connect there uh, without the need for any other gas bottles. Okay. okay now we're going to go inside. I'm sure you can speak to particularly the heating experts and the mechanics. Inside we go. As you can see, it's, it's, it's getting dark outside, but uh, it's still really sweet light here. Okay, you've got your panel here. Okay. The first switch on the left hand side is the main power. So that's your master switch. That's the one on the left. Okay. Next to that, You've got the main lights, and so now you can see we're now lit up pretty much like Blackpool illuminations. Okay. This, the third one in, that turns on the outside light on the offside and the gas locker light as well. And then this one. The next switch relates to your water supply. Okay, so here you can see it says internal 
and external. Right, there's a three-way rocker switch there. Now this three-way rocker switch works as thus. If it is in the central position, as in, in the zero position, that means you are getting water from an external source. So that would be your aqua roll, or if you did get a direct feed, uh, direct water supply through that. Okay, so zero means you're getting the water from an outside source. Okay, now the INT or number one internal, that means you'll be using your internal tank. Now that internal tank is located under your bed. We'll get to that bit, I'll show you that in a minute. That's where it is. Uh, but to fill that internal tank up, you would need to go to number two setting, external. So what that does, that fills up your internal tank from an external supply. So whether that's a, an aqua roll or a direct feed. Okay, so in the middle on the zero, you're getting your water from an outside source. Internal means you're using your internal tank, but to fill that internal tank, you need to go external and fill it up from an aqua roll. Okay. Now, to turn the actual water pump on, so you have the power switch there, turn that on. Now I do know from here, that 35% there, that 35% is the internal tank has is 35% full at the moment. So I know there's water in here, so we can go from an internal source, that then lights up, run, so we know that's how the water is coming, where the water is coming from at the moment. Also on this panel, you've got 13.2 volts. That's, we're actually plugged into the mains. But that just shows how much power is available at this time. Okay. Next, to put on the main coil, this is the important bit. This is the IWCT system uh, screen. This is where everything uh, to do with the heating and the hot water is uh, accessed from. Okay, so the power button is there. When it comes on, not only will that little light come on, you'll initially get that display. Okay, so this sign shows that we are plugged into the mains. It's currently 15 degrees inside here, just showing that that's what the temperature is. Okay, to access all of the information or to change any settings, go into menu. So in menu, on the first part of menu, the first side, that, it's showing you the temperature you want it to be in here. Now to change that temperature, all you need to do is either minus on the touch screen or plus, just up and down, however you see fit, whatever temperature suits you, okay? Uh, from personal experience, I find 21 is perfectly acceptable during the daytime. Uh, often, hopefully, uh, the heating doesn't have to come on but uh, that's the level it's set at, okay? Now, you can, should you wish to do so, you have, there's a night setting available. Now, this settings wheel, press settings, the first one you see there is nighttime settings. So you can set it down to a temperature of 18 degrees, so in this particular instance, uh, coming on at 10 o'clock at night until six o'clock in the morning, uh, so if you wanted to set that, you could change that temperature-wise, okay? But once you have that right, just press there and it says on. So we then go back to the main menu and you'll now see A, which means there's an active uh, setting on there. Press that A, activated function, it's the nighttime setting, turn that on. And then if you want to just turn that off, turn it off, okay? There are, in the settings, loads and loads of different settings. Uh, you're more than welcome to go through any, every single one of them, uh, because we do give you a man manual. Okay, so as you see, activate setting, night time there, press that, and it says off, and then we have no A there, so we haven't any activated settings. Okay, the next one down is for your hot water. Now. You can have, if that triangle has nothing inside, that means your hot water is not working, yeah, it's not on at the moment. You have, in effect, three settings. So off is one. You have 
half of the triangle, uh, which in fairness will do you 99.9% .9 of the time uh, for washing up, uh, anything like that. If you want to boost the power or to the shower, fill it up, press it one more time and that gives you the full triangle and then you will be on full power and it'll give you plenty of hot water. Okay? But 90% of the time that will work on the half setting. Okay. Then the next setting is the amount of power you are using for the heating. Now the options are off, so if you're not using any, one kilowatt, uh, I can't imagine a reason why you would unless you've possibly gone to France or something and you don't have much power available to you on the pole, then that might be uh, a setting for you. It will heat everything up, but it'll heat it slowly. In the UK science, two kilowatts will be more than adequate, uh, plenty, again, 99% of the time. Okay? If you are fortunate and you need a boost to the heating want everything to go work very quickly, put on to three quick kilowatts. That's the maximum. Uh, with going on to three kilowatts, uh, that's just for the hot water and the heating. Uh, then if you put the microwave on, uh, a toaster on, and a kettle on, you might find that you trip the, uh, the electricity. Okay. You do have an option um, to go onto gas. Uh, I, however, if you're on a site that has electricity, I would suggest using that. But if you do go out anywhere uh, where there's no electricity available, you can run the whole system on gas. Okay. Like I say, there are settings galore. By all means, go through them at your leisure. That setting should be enough for 99% of the time. your fuse box okay these are your breakers and your fuses in there okay whilst we're in here it's a good time to have a look at the uh, the water system that's not looking at the water system this yellow switch is very important whilst that yellow switch is in that position that is allowing water to come into the van from the outside source okay uh, so from an aqua roll direct feed or whatever when you are finished with the van and you are going to take it away uh, recommend to lift this valve into the vertical position where that will drain all the water out from your uh, water tank not, not the internal tank but your hot water tank and just lift that up then open your taps uh, in the kitchen and in the bathroom just to let any water drain out particularly over winter that's very very important okay right here you've also got uh, a gas isolator there's quite a few gas isolators uh, throughout the van uh, however if you're using propane uh, as it's set up for you can just turn everything off at the the valve on the gas bottle okay stereo uh, you've got two speakers at the front and two speakers uh, by the bed uh, it's a bluetooth uh, ipod ready stereo also has uh, an aux capacity and a usb stick to play music now we've got obviously it's a radio as well uh, also in here this switch here is the isolator for your air conditioning unit okay We'll get to that in a little bit. There's your, showing you the solar panel, uh, your TV aerial here. Uh, for the TV aerial to get a signal wherever you're going, undo this, lift this up until, uh, and then tighten, obviously tighten this bit up so you, your aerial is up. Um, have a look on site 
which way everyone else's aerial is pointing and then point it that way. It also has the opportunity to change the pitch of the aerial. You might see them flat sometimes just by twisting that part. Okay. Uh, you will need to retune every time you move uh, to a different site. If you're going to be permanently based, you will only hopefully have to do it once. Okay. Right, okay, so in the rest of the van, just quickly show you the, uh, the blinds, how they work. So you've got a blackout blind, okay, and above that again, when that's done again, you've got a fly screen, so you can have your windows open, and then they just the back up to do the windows. So obviously, the windows open here. I'm not going to open the windows at the moment because it's raining, so uh, that wouldn't be ideal. But those blinds work the same on all of the windows in here, uh, that apart from the main sun, the skylight at the front, or sunroof at the front, because it doesn't open, so there's no fly screen on it. Otherwise, fly screens everywhere. You also have this long sunroof at the front. There is a bit of a knack to opening it. Again, I'm not gonna open it, because as you can see, it's uh, quite wet at the moment. But once you've opened all of these catches, then lift gently until you hear a click and that will then stop. Lift again, you'll hear another click, so it'll be at the top height, then lift again and drop it down to close it up. Always remember, close it up, particularly when traveling. Okay. have individual switches on them, uh, LED lights, so they can be on or at more convenience. So they, can, they also swivel around, so you can use them pointing down if you just wanted to read. Whatever, you've got light switches uh, here for the kitchen, so that shows you that there. And these lights are the under, under the counter light. And that's also an under the bed light and uh, also sorry, guide lights, I suppose, on the side. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to turn around so quickly. I might get seasick. It's got a couple of sockets there. A kettle, toaster, whatever. Got a butcher bro, coffee maker. And you also have on this side a socket and a USB charge socket as well. Okay. Coming down, the, uh, you've got TV aerial point here, satellite point, should you get a satellite fitted at any stage, uh, a 6 volt uh, socket and two, two 30 volt sockets. And the most important thing in a caravan is your drinks cabinet. Okay. Alright, well, let's move it along. Here we've got your microwave, it's a standard microwave, sorry if you're seeing a picture of me now, I didn't mean to scare anyone. Uh, standard microwave, uh, eco, it does have the switch up there, so the electric switch, so if you need to switch it off for any reason. It's not showing as being on at the moment, but press on eco and then it will come on. And again, there is a book with this. It will go off on its own when it's ready to do so. Right. Okay, the fridge. Now, this fridge, the power on button for the fridge is there. Keep it pressed down, the fridge switches off. Press it again. The fridge comes on. First thing it says, this is now running on electric, which we know could be plugged in. You do have the option of using it on gas. It's beeping because we have no gas connected. Also, when you're traveling, um, that particular button there will allow you to keep the fridge cool as you're traveling. It won't free bring it down to cold from, from like a standing start, uh, but if, it, if the fridge is already cool or cold, that will maintain the temperature. Okay, to change the temperature, this is the thermometer. Compress 
until it lights up everything. One, two, three, four, or five. We generally recommend four because uh, items can freeze if you put it on five. The fridge itself, ooh, blue light, is a large fridge, large freezer compartment, plenty of ice for your gin and tonics. Uh, when I call it the fridge, well, I generally call it the wine cooler. Uh, but that's my issue, not yours. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to the kitchen side, I've got the cooker here. A uh, Thetford Aspire 2 cooker. It's got an electric hob and three gas burners. Um, the electric hob there is the switch. Uh, the electric main electric switch is in the little cabinet underneath. And there's the electric socket. There's also another gas isolator should you wish to use that. Okay. Now, it also has a separate grill. And this grill pan can be used as uh, an extra tray within the oven, uh, should you wish to use it. Uh, why you would need three, I don't know, but you may well do. Okay. Standard gas, except that one hob. Okay. Uh, this glass top will need to be fully up for the gas burners to work and the electric to work. Uh, if it's not, uh, often we have calls saying my cooker doesn't work, th then you need to open the uh, the glass top up fully. Sink, mixer tap there. Already has got yourself a little bowl in there. And the drawers, cutlery drawer. Very importantly, in this one, this little cupboard, you've got your standalone table. Okay. here cabinet to keep well, whatever you like Large bedside wardrobe. You was noticing there's something bubbling away. Now that is the Aldi uh, heating, uh, basically the, the radiator supply. Uh, it's 50% water, 50% glycol. Uh, it's um, minimum level there, maximum there. Uh, bear in mind the heating is actually on at the moment. If the heating uh, fluid when the system is switched off it's just above minimum that is absolutely perfect you do not want it to be at maximum before you turn it on because it does expand and then you will lose some of the fluid okay so light that comes on as soon as you open the uh, cupboard my favorite part this bit that's for uh, when I say my favorite part probably my wife's favorite part because I'm a uh, I have to make her a cup of tea and leave it on there for in the morning. <clears throat> and you've got drawers galore, plenty of storage, overhead storage in the bedroom area on both sides. And you have a smaller wardrobe over there. Nice tall mirror there. Mood lighting at the back of the bed as well as the individual spotlights. More drawer space. And there's the heating vents, uh, small cupboard there. You also have a USB point over there, light switch, and another TV aerial point and socket. So if you wanted a TV bracket put up in here, that is something that can be done. Okay. Tank, internal tank, 40 litre tank. Uh, we recommend you not to travel with water inside this tank. Here, there is 
I am the tap currently saying closed but turn that to open and that will literally let all the water from this tank drain straight onto the floor okay so when traveling keeping weight down don't have any water in there okay again into the bathroom here's a separate toilet that does swivel round so if you've got long legs you won't bang your knees on the toilet roll holder uh, this is where the flush is this is where the light is that will shine when the toilet needs emptying you'll absolutely guarantee you that will be just before you go to bed uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something you'll get used to and got the sink cupboard on storage under there uh, large shower surprisingly they are very well, not surprisingly they are very good showers uh, have one of the same and yeah they're very good uh, again mirror and cabinet above the toilet side and your curtains in the window and then back to the back what I'll do now we'll go outside and we'll show you uh, the really exciting self-leveling system conditioning unit uh, this is the remote control that you need to use it so uh, there is this power the power on button is here the blue button press that on there uh, you've got various modes that it can go on to uh, give it a two or three seconds yeah and here we go you hear that and that's very nice and cheap put that go got various modes on it. Thank you.